Hey guys, this is going to be another quick Linux command video. Check the link in the description for more info and for copy and paste examples. The Linux F user command shows the PIDs of all processes that are accessing a specific file or file system. It will display a list of PIDs and the type of access that they have. So uh, I'd like to point out that you should run this as, uh, so we're, we're gonna run this first example here, but I'd like to point out that I'm running as root and you need to run as root to see everything. If you run as a specific user, you only have what that user has access to. So um, access by the kernel is only shown with the dash V option. That's another thing I should point out. So anyways, basic usage, we're gonna see all processes that are accessing the home directory of user one. So F user home user one, and we see a whole bunch of processes are accessing this. So let's check this one, for example, just to see what it is. And we could say PSEF, rep for it, and look for, you know, 15840. And you see here, um, IBUS-X11. So, uh, yeah, because I'm running X Windows. So this process happens to be accessing something in this home directory right now. So, any case, another thing you can do, uh, oh, and notice this, is, this has a dash C. So, current directory, the current directory that I'm, is, is that right? Yeah, in any case, so that's the current directory of the process, I believe. But that's listed as current directory. That's the access type. So another thing you can run is you can add a dash M. So instead of anything accessing that file, which would be anything accessing a file under the this directory, we can also say anything accessing a file um, on the same file system. So add a dash M. So everything on the, we, we, I basically have one file system for the entire disk. So anything accessing the entire disk at all is effectively what this is going to do. But if you had separate partitions with different file systems, that would be another case. But in any case, we're going to run F user dash M and that shows a whole lot more processes and you have different um, levels of access. Like here you have RC instead of just C. So our, for example, R is supposed to be root directory. So it's running from the root directory, and it is, and that's the current directory that it's in. Um, if you see RCE over here, um, E is an executable being run. So this is running from the root directory, and that's the current directory, and it's an executable being run. So let's just check what this is really quick. ECF rep paste. All right. So five five one is uh, yeah accounts daemon. So that that's what that is. So. What else do we want to do? We can, um, so instead of just running this, you could, instead of just running it like this, all right, so here you just get processes and the level of access. If you add a dash U, you can get, it will also include the user ID. So see here, all user one, most of these are user one, some of these are root, accessing the stuff in uh, this user's home directory. Now, you can also, instead of that, you could use a dash V. So that's going to be verbose and give you columns with info. So dash V will give you all these nice columns here. So that gives you the user and the actual process itself. So it gives you a whole bunch more information. So see, you have the everything within here accessing a file within this directory. You can see the user, the PID, um, the access level, and the actual command itself. Like you have pipe wire, wire plumber, um, and a whole bunch of other things like GNOME sessions, stuff like that. So yeah, th those are some, that's some of the basic usage. Now, another thing you can do th with this is kill processes, right? So I have some things accessing a, so you can basically kill any process that's accessing a file or a directory. So you can do that. Um, I actually set something up in this other tab, which, uh, yep, I'm VIing a file in a specific directory, right? So um, I basically have VI running, editing this file called test, and this is in the slash data one directory, right? So I'm going to go ahead and say F user data one. So if you do that, you see these two processes. And let, let's just check those real quick. So we can see two, two processes, whoops, so yeah. So two processes,
And yeah, so it basically shows them all here in this first command. So you see bash is accessing that file system and vim or vi. So I ran vi test. So that's what we saw in this other tab over here. So um, I'm running vim on a file called test under the uh, slash data one directory, right? So if we want to kill so we, we basically have these two things, and the reason uh, you know the grep command came up because it just matches the PID in the grep command. Basically, these are the two processes, you know, 17042 and 17046. See the two that were listed here. Those are two processes accessing something inside the data one directory. So basically, I cd to that directory. So you know, bash is using that directory, and I did vi on a file called test. So that's also accessing a file within that directory. So we can kill both of those processes so without having to look them up and kill them individually. So instead of just running f user data one, we could say f user dash k data one. And um, this is going to kill both of those processes. And when that happens, it's actually going to kill this tab too because the bash session in that tab is going to get killed. So run that and boom, that, that uh, other tab got killed and it kind of shifted. Um, shifted my terminal a little bit because I, I now no longer have the tabs. So uh, I, I align this terminal really carefully to the section of my screen that I'm recording. But and I tried to get like the you know the font and everything just right for the video. But uh, any case, so that's one way you can kill things. I'm going to show you a few other ways you can kill them, a few other options. So I'm going to have to be reopening this and uh, doing the same thing over and over. Actually, before we even do that. Let's go ahead and see now it's aligned correctly now that I have a tab reopened. But uh, let's just run F user on that just to verify and nothing is using that, right? Now, let, let's see here. We can say so CD data one test and uh, all right, edit anyways. All right, there we go. Now we're, we have We've cd'd to that directory and uh, Vim is editing it. So we should see the same, we should see these same two processes. And yeah, so two processes, we already know it's bash and VI or, or Vim. So instead of just killing it, right? So we could kill any process accessing this. Um, we, we could actually say interactive, right? So we could run it interactively. So let's, let's try that. KI, I for interactive. It says kill process. 1781. Now, I, I wish I knew which one that was, but let's just, you know, what? I'm going to say no, just so I don't have to start it again. Now, kill process 1786. You can say no to that one too. No is the default, so you can just hit enter, but that's interactive. We could have said yes. So um, the other thing I want to show you is, all right, the same, but only if it is a mount point for safety. So instead of an I, so an I is a little bit of a safety feature, you can say capital M and it will only kill the processes. So that's not going to be interactive, but it's only going to kill the processes if the slash data directory is a mount point itself. So for example, if we had a disk, so this is useful if we had, for example, a disk mounted at data one and we couldn't unmount the disk because some process was accessing something on that disk and we wanted to automatically just kill that process, we could kill any process accessing the disk and we can make sure it only does it if we're accessing a mount point. So we, we could we could run it like that and it says this is not a mount point, so it is not going to kill the processes on there. So safety feature, but that's great for if you wanted to kill anything, you know, accessing like a removable drive or something like that. So if you want to be extra safe, you could say KMI, so it's gonna be uh, you know interactive and uh, you know it's it's going to uh, only do it if it's a mount point. So yeah, that would be extra safe. Now you can also say only kill processes with write access. So you could say add a W for write access. So um, basically like M, I, and a W are options that only go together with the, they only make sense with the, the K option, but this will kill only things with write access. So it looks like we killed, looks like we killed, uh, let's see here. Let's see if this killed anything. Yep, it did not kill any of those so it looks like none of those were writing at the moment so any case I'm, I'm not gonna 
go deeper into why that has that type of access, you would think Vim would have write access. Um, maybe just didn't open the file with that until you go ahead and write to the file. But any case, did not kill it. So let's see, what else can we do with this? Um, kill any process. So you can kill any process on the, uh, so if you did K, M, you could kill any process accessing uh, the file system that this file is on. Now, this is on my current root file system, so I don't want to kill it, all processes on my root file system, so I'm not going to use that. So that's the lowercase m. Uppercase m, don't get these confused. Uppercase m is only if it's a mount point, and lowercase m is kill anything on that uh, on that same file system. So what, what else can we do here? We can do... Uh, we can do mm, so kill anything. This will kill anything on that file system if it's a mount point. So the, these two, go, lowercase m and uppercase m, go together really well. So let's see here. The other thing, um, if you want to list signal names, let's say f user dash l. Now these are signals that can be used. So um, worth pointing out is that, uh, let, let's see here, kill all process. So when you kill, you can actually specify a signal to send instead of just killing a process. Um, you, when you kill a process, you're actually uh, sending it a, a signal that will then kill it. You're basically sending it a kill signal, but instead, if you wanted to, you could specify like quit or hop or any of these other signals that you have the option to use. Um, I can't think of a reason to do that, but you might choose to do that if you wanted to. So um, next thing I want to show you is uh, checking ports. So this isn't just for checking files on a file system, but you can check any file handle. So you can check um, ports like TCP IP ports. So for example, you could say, um, let's see, F user dash N TCP. And you can say, um, so you could say um, HTTP slash TCP. So this is going to check. We're going to. This is the web port, port 80. We're going to specify it by name first, and you can use that. And we see we can see. Uh, yeah, these processes are are use, basically running on port 80. So we can also change this. We can, we can just say port 80 instead of accessing it by name. We can just say port 80. So yeah, the dash n TCP tells us what protocol we want to use. So, um, or the namespace is what it's called. So you have file, UDP, and TCP as three namespaces. By default, we're using file. So a dash n changes the namespace to TCP, and you can just look for this port right here. So let's see, next thing I should show you is um, say f user dash k. So you can kill all processes. All right, dash n TCP 80. So you can kill all processes on this port. So let's kill it. And let's just verify. So nothing is using that port anymore. So we basically just killed Nginx. So yeah, so we killed Nginx. We could start that back up. And there we go. And there we go. Now it is now listening on that port again. So, <clears throat> so if you can use a dash K to kill any process that's listening on a specified port. So you can also, um, another option you could use is a dash U to show the users. Dash U, and this is similar to what we did before with files. It just shows the yeah, usernames for these prod. So we see uh, three processes, or, or three PIDs, you know, PID, 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 in each PID. These two are the user www data, and this one is root. So uh, let's see here. We can, um, all right, so that was a U, and you could also do a V for verbose. Let's see how this looks with, uh, yeah, you, you can see, um, this is a similar output to when we did verbose with a file. So you can also say UDP. Um, so let's see here. So 
f user dash n udp nothing udp is on that port so you can check udp port 631 like this and you can also check 631 on tcp so we have uh, udp port 631 and tc port p port 631 so two separate ports um, same port number different protocols so the other thing you can do is um, well, let, let, let's actually just check um, v so you see that's cups d and for udp it is cups d browse d and uh, the other thing you can do is you can specify ipv4 or ipv6 so you can see that that um we're, we're using this port is listening on both ipv4 and ipv6 if you for whatever reason want to specify those um, versions of uh, IP and that's pretty much everything I wanted to show you for this and uh, yeah that's basically it for fuser remember check the links in the description for more info hit the subscribe button for more useful content like this we also have a ton of other more interesting content covering things like coding hardware software servers Raspberry Pis 3d printing and a whole lot more hopefully you found this useful Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on that next video.